This video is brought to you by Linode. If you're looking to set up your own app, site, or project in the cloud, you should use Linode because it's the easiest way to get a project online. I've been using them for over eight years now, and I've scaled them to uh, a couple hundred thousand customers in a single month, which saves me a ton of money over Azure and AWS. Linode comes with 24-7 customer support, and you get a $20 credit if you click on the link in the description tab below. That's up to four months free on their smaller plans. So make sure you guys sign up with the code HAWKS19 or click on the link in the description tab below. Hey guys, what's up? So this video is going to be the 2019 edition of the best Python projects of 2019. I did this last year and I comprised a top 10 list that I felt were the coolest Python projects that I've, uh, I've seen this year. Now, some of them, just to, to be very clear, like it started off, uh, some of them were kicked off like towards like the, the, the fourth quarter of last year. So those got included in this list and, um, you know, give or take. So basically all these projects are, are very new to me and I've been in the Python world for 10 years now. So I won't waste your time with saying, hey, Django and, you know, requests and all this other stuff like these, you know, the libraries have been around forever. So we're going to get into kind of some new stuff here. All right, so number 10 on this list is going to go to Portray. And this is a cool Python project that is automatically generating document documentation for your Python project. And it does that through the README but um, and, and some more stuff behind that. But you can actually customize this to be uh, a, a, lot, a lot different than what you're seeing right here. But the documentation, if you guys have ever tried to develop documentation for your project, there's things like called read the docs. And I, I forget what that was even written in but i remember when i created a project called django easy avatar many years ago i think 2014 um i was using read the docs and i think it was written in c plus plus or something I, I don't don't quote me on that but the bottom line is that i had to monkey around with a lot of different stuff to even figure out how to create documentation for this project that i had spent a bunch of time on so these days a lot of lazy projects are, are just all documented through the github readme but this tool simply takes that and then creates it uh, into HTML that you can then just quickly import right into a website with no additional work on your ha behalf. All right, number nine on this list kind of cheats on my list just a little bit because it says that the project uh, goes back two years. It technically goes back to like March of last year, but it was sort of reinvigorated lately. But if you guys have ever tried to deal with uh, scraping Twitter's uh, like front end or if you're just like using their API, this project was created to actually save a lot of time for you. There's a lot of different unique ideas that can be integrated with Twitter and having to deal with their API is a nightmare, but this project allows you to just go ahead and bypass all of that. And by the way, I've also created scrapers that were actually trying to collect tweets from uh, Twitter and, and with its infinite scroll and all this stuff, I remember how I was having to like inject JavaScript to scroll the page to like, you know, to, to fire that. Um, and, and that was, uh, that was fun. But Anyway, I quickly abandoned that entire idea of my entire, I think I was trying to come up with some sort of project that was basically going to try to uh, report on news as of basically, instead of like news reporters reporting on it, it was all like from actual tweets from like celebrities, but that was my idea. It was kind of stupid, but whatever. Um, anyway, it was a nightmare to deal with. So that's why this is on my list at number nine. Uh, I think it's a cool project. And we need more of these kind of scraping projects with these main social networks that get all of the traffic. So if we had tools that could better integrate with those social networks, then I think we can obviously come up with our own uh, unique spin on that. Plus, this has a um, a contributor, Kenneth uh, Kenneth Reitz here, who is uh, he's a pretty popular developer, and he's known for uh, if I keep clicking on the wrong thing, um, but he's known for Python requests, and uh, he's also a fellow Virginian. Although it says he's from the Milky Way. All right, number eight on my list is going to go to Molten. This is a new API framework. So if you are taking some of my tutorials on React, and I know you guys are complaining that some of it's not for beginners, but whatever, man, you got you to do it. And uh, it, like, But you have that front end built where, well, now you need some sort of back end API. But Python's a good option for that. Like Python Flask is a, is a really good option. But here, Molten is like the new kid on the block that is basically designed just to create RESTful APIs. So you could spin up a server very quickly, create a bunch of different API endpoints, hook it up to a database somewhere, maybe use something like SQL Alchemy, and then just start querying that data and send it back as JSON to your React client-side front end or Angular or Vue. 
But anyway, you guys, you guys get the point. I like whenever uh, it seems like we've had somewhat of a framework drought, in my opinion. We don't have as many. Um, now, there's also a sync I.O. type of uh, non-blocking frameworks out there as well that I didn't mention. But I think I mentioned it on last year's list, which is Python Sanic, which uh, is, is still impressive. So if you were looking to go the asynchronous route, then uh, that is an option for you. All right, so number seven on this list is going to go to Pampy. So Pampy actually takes a note out of something like Haskell, a purely functional language. And really, the best way to define this is a souped-up switch statement type of thing, um, like a, a bunch of if-elses or switch statements. This allows you to use pattern matching to have a much more succinct uh, code base. And uh, for functional developers, people coming from like a Haskell background, then something like this is going to make a lot of sense to them. All right, number six on this list is one that really excites me because my programming days go back to data scraping, and I, I still love, and I haven't really done it much lately, but I love requesting web pages and, and extracting data from it. Uh, but one of the hard things that, that we had as soon as I entered the programming field was that web pages all became JavaScript. So all the JavaScript that was hitting APIs and rendering onto the page, uh, most of your data was contained inside of that. So then you had to use stuff like Selenium, or you had to make calls directly to the API. Uh, but this is also made by Kenneth Reeds, the fellow Virginian. <laughs> I'm going to stop saying that. Uh, but anyway, request, uh, uh, request HTML. This is um, a, a good modern way to scrape websites with just Python. So instead of having to use something like Selenium, which is slow as dog crap and a memory hog, um, you can just use a small Python script um, that is shown in this example. And then the best part is you can see that it actually has the ability, if we scroll down here, to render JavaScript. So um, data that is rendered via JavaScript to the page, you can still extract that through just a simple uh, Python command line interface. So now we can start making our Google competitors. Actually, you're probably going to get banned if you do that, but um, we need distributed networks and tons of IP addresses these days to create a modern Google, probably. All right, number five on this list is called The Fuck. Um, this was actually, I think, really, really funny. But what it does is it uh, retracts your last GitHub statement. So as we make mistakes with commits and all that stuff, um, this thing will actually go ahead and, and fix that for you. So you just simply have to put in the uh, fuck command, and it will fix that for you. So very funny project, and number five on this list. All right, number four is PyXL, if I'm saying that right. Um, I'm, I'm assuming PyXL is, is the way to say that. But anyway, this one is awesome because Python's not known for being a uh, really a language that you're going to write video games in. But if you were looking to ba make b basic video games, like Python's certainly capable of these types of games. And this framework makes it a lot easier. And it's one of the new kids on the block. And uh, honestly, I want to get into some basic game development. And I would love to just, just start with some of this old school stuff because really I've spent some time in Unity and Unreal. And something like this is um, just a lot more appealing to me right now. I'm going to make like, like an old school uh, text adventure game with a, like a, some some terrible graphics but anyway yeah definitely hack around with this project all right number three on this list is going to be simple coin so blockchain is still a popular thing and while it's still in the hotness it makes number three on this list because if you're trying to get started with blockchain technology python's probably not gonna be your first go-to for that like uh, uh bitcoin was created in c plus plus but this is more of an educational type of thing so it's all about learning how blockchain works, and you can go ahead and build your own bit, uh, well, cryptocurrency blockchain technology using this product or project. All right, number two on this list is real-time voice cloning, and this was actually built by a genius from Belgium who, unfortunately, after he created this project, it, it uh, garnered a lot of attention and then unfortunately got hired into a company now, which is obvious because he's uh, pretty damn smart. And um, now he really can't work on it too much. So somebody else has to pick up the slack if, if you're able to. But what this does is it can listen to uh, a voice and then clone that voice after just listening to it in just uh, literally five seconds and, and then just start reading text from the screen based on that clone voice. So the company that he got hired into is this company called Resemble, Resemble, uh, I don't know, whatever it's called. They, it, they generate AI uh, voices for video games. So or they use AI to generate voices for video games. So that's pretty cool. So instead of like, 
having to maybe pay a bunch of different actors or whatever, like they can, you know, have an actor talk, I guess, for a little bit of time and then uh, clone that voice and then use text to then have that voice, uh, you know, obviously read that text. So you don't have to pay somebody to do cuts and, and do, you know, 18 hours worth of recording if you have a robot that cloned that dude's voice for five seconds and started, um, you know, making making that text and stuff. So it's an awesome project. And he was working on it as a PhD thesis, I believe. And it's unfortunate he's not able to work on it now, but I'm sure he's doing pretty cool stuff at his current employer. All right, guys. And number one on this list, and even though it was not created uh, this year, I mean, it's been something that's been worked on for quite a few years now, but it's, I think it's definitely arisen to be like one of the best machine learning tools out there, especially for beginners. Like somebody like me who doesn't do machine learning, artificial intelligence, I was able to follow some of these tutorials that PyTorch has and then get my image classifier up and running that, uh, you know, for, for example, this particular tutorial here, it's very easy to, I wouldn't say maybe easy for absolute beginners, but like if you just follow all the code, it's pretty awesome to see it work and, you know, see the actual success rate of this thing predicting the type of animals that are in the image. Um, so it gets you, your feet wet with, you know, modern day machine learning, artificial intelligence, and it's, to date, it's the easiest thing that I've ever seen when it comes to trying to get an actual project up and running. All right, guys, so that is my top 10 list this year. There's obviously all types of Python projects I was not able to mention. I'm sure there's some new ones that I didn't mention. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and have a good night. Please subscribe. Bye.